Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Jesus. This may catch some of you off guard. Amen. But, uh, having said that, amen, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Uh, let's get started here. And I want to start right off with letting you know ahead of time that uh, I have no intention of quenching the Spirit of God because I get to the end of about 30 minutes of sharing, amen, and decide, all right, well, that's enough. Uh, it's, they're not going to pay attention after 30 minutes, amen, Jesus. Therefore, I'm going to quench the Spirit, all right, for the sake of those who don't want to listen any, to what's being said or to what the Spirit of God has to say beyond that 30 minutes. So I'm no longer going to pay any attention to this clock that's sitting down here. Now if you want to stop and start these videos, Amen Jesus, according to your ability to be able to sit and listen, then by all means do so. There's no problem there. Amen? But I myself relative to what I just got done sharing, believe by faith that this is as important an aspect of our coming back into or on the foundation of which we were established upon as any other, if not the most important aspect that we need to get waking up and shaken out of, okay, is the idea that, well, if I go there for 30 minutes and listen to uh, someone sharing the Word of God, uh, well, I've done my deed for the week. Uh, that isn't the truth. That isn't the truth, and it's uh, uh, part of the lie that's been being spread from generation to generation has absolutely nothing to do with the work and the will of the Father. If you don't want to hang out and share, if you don't want to sit and listen and be a part of, which is another part of the aspect of the body of Christ. It is a many-membered body that requires the participation of everyone who is listening. It isn't about one person sharing what the Spirit of God has led them to share, all right, without the participation of the other members of that body. It's absolutely critical as a witness that it be established in and among the many members that we reason with one another concerning the work and the will of the Father, especially at this hour of the day. So, that I will not do anymore. I will not quench the Spirit. I want to go right now into what I believe the Word of God tells us is the truth. And I have shared this before. I'm going to share it one more time and after that, I'm not going back on it. There is a story. Amen, Jesus. In the Word of God, that Jesus gave to us a parable concerning the vine dresser. Now, this is not the vineyard owner of which the time cut. This is the vine dresser. And there we see the Father coming to his garden, I believe, is the household of faith. And the gardener, who I believe is Jesus, is tending, all right, to one of the trees in the garden. Well, when the Father appears, 
The father says, I've been coming for three years now, and this tree has not produced a fruit. Cut it down. Gardener says, whoa, wait a minute. Amen, Jesus. All right. Let me put a little fertilizer in it first. Okay. And then we'll determine whether or not the tree needs to be cut down. And that's generally the gist of what's going on. And what I see there, relative, and I'll give you the second part, scripturally speaking, of the witness. So we have two or more witnesses of scripture of which we can establish a truth upon. The next one is the actual period of time of which the Lord was here discipling the disciples was three years. I see those two as a witness to me that when a person first comes in to the baptism of the Holy Spirit or into the study of the Word of God that there is at least a minimum of three years of study now, the intensity of that study is dependent upon, I suppose, the portion of the Spirit of God that you've been given, the measure of faith. And we're to dig down deep. The deeper we dig into the Word of God, the deeper the root is, the stronger the tree is going to be. So, to me, you are a babe in the Lord for at least the first three years of your coming in to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a genuine, sincere study of the Word of God. For the first three years, you are a babe. <laughs> now, what are the things associated with a babe? You, some of you may say, well, a babe shouldn't even speak at all. This is not true. You're to ask questions. And when you ask questions, there are to be pertinent questions dealing with a real issue in the Word of God that you are sincerely seeking for an answer. And if you have taken the time to ask that question, and I don't care to whom it is, there are a couple of things you need to have and receive by faith regarding the Word of God and where that Word came from. The Word that is being shared with you, that we share with one another, came from God the Father. So when I look at that and read that word, I am listening to God the Father. When I ask a question of someone who is sharing the word of God, God's word, I'm not just asking the individual. I'm asking God. Is that individual God? No. It is the Word of God that you are asking about to that person whom in obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit is to answer you with a witness and a testimony of the truth concerning two or more scriptures pertaining to that question you've asked. So a witness is established in the answer. And the reason I'm mentioning this is, is that because there is not supposed to be this arbitrary just flim flam here, there, anywhere disarray 
and an orderly study and leading of the Holy Spirit. It is pertinent, it is timely, and it does the work it needs to do in us and through us according to the will of the Father. So don't come asking things that you don't really care about. <coughs> or for the sake of tripping, attempting to trip some brother up, okay, with this attitude like the Pharisees had with Jesus, amen Jesus, to try to trip him up, okay, don't even bother. If, you, if that's your attitude and that's your spirit, I would just assume you go somewhere else. Find someone else to play those games with. I'm not here playing any games. I'm here doing what I've waited my entire life, by the grace of God, to be given the opportunity to do. And that's what the Word told me that I was to do. And trust me, I've, uh, Father God, for those of you who really know what it is, to be on fire, to burn up with the zeal of the Father's house, looking at the condition of the church and listening to what's being said and most importantly to what is not being said. If this thing has not, oh my God, got, gotten to the point where you just could not restrain, woe is me if I speak not the word of God. If that is not just in your bones, gotten you to the point where you've just got to say something and out it comes, and you will find yourself doing that in and among the congregation, which is the reason why a lot of people get put out. I've had my share of having people turn away and put me out because I've been drawn to that point in the zeal for the Father's house. That the truth had to be said. And I had to say it. Now that will be a continual event taking place in your life. And when it does, okay, and I'm not just talking about two or three years or four or five years. I'm talking about waiting. The waiting I've waited. And the work and the will of the Father that had to be done in my life. So it isn't all about uh, this sanctification of which I'm holier than thou. And uh, now I've been 35 years. No, that 35 years was filled, okay, with getting me right with God and becoming one with the Father. But all along that path, that continual desire, that crying out, burning up inside of me, at some point in time, I believed that the Father, because the Word says, when you come in among them, do not take the seats of prominence up in the front row, because that's how they used to sit. They get the, the elders and the, and the soul and souls uh, up in the front row, and you, we used to call the back rows of the, of the church, amen, Jesus, sinner's row. <laughs> the one closest to the back door so I can shoot out of there as soon as the service is over. Amen. Sinners roll. <laughs> no. He says that's the place we're supposed to go to. Sinners roll. And let someone else call you up. So, I relate that to this journey of faith. And having been restrained because of the work and the will that needed to take place of the Father in my life to bring me to the point where at this hour He might be able to use me and others after have, they have been tried and tested and have learned and studied and been led by the Spirit of God to understand, and they come to a measure of wisdom, and to understand caution and prudence, discernment. 
then and only then, by the will of the Father, did I allow myself to begin to share on this YouTube. Just so happens it all worked together. I mean, YouTube and uh, all this uh, technology has only come about in the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. Who knows? But nonetheless, and I had not been drawn into the use of this in only the last couple of years. But I had shared with you what had taken place 10 or 12 years ago. Amen. To those who have visited this channel. Alright. Relative to my walk of faith and where I was at 10 or 12 years ago up in Phoenix. And what had taken place regarding a concern that I had had. Alright. That I rebuked, you know, I didn't receive it. Amen. But it had to do with tuberculosis, uh, so on and so forth, and uh, a false positive, okay, which six months later was straightened out in name and Jesus. All right. But nonetheless, at that moment, that, that understanding of my mortality, okay, at that time I was about, uh, I don't know, 50, around 50 years of age, amen. It's probably been like sometime someplace between 47 and 50, in and around that area, that I was here the second time out west uh, for a period of time. I was downtrodden, beat up from the feet up, tore up from the floor up, amen, Jesus, the whole nine yards. Drug addicted, alcoholic, and divorced for the second time. Without hope, and that's when that seed of faith for the outer man fell on the ground. But nonetheless, the issue I'm trying to share with you is not just the walk of faith and the study of the Word of God and the living out of that which has been worked in, okay, which are all a part of the aspects of coming to this point and time of which I... Okay, now, some of you say, well, I honor the Father, and six months after you start studying the Word you feel as though you're prepared to start to share and or even teach others. And this you call honoring the Father. Or honoring the Word of God. Jesus. Well, your understanding of what it is to bring honor and glory to the Father is a little different than mine. Uh, maybe it's because I'm old school. Maybe that's it. Maybe this new generation of new believers, okay? Because we have reference in the Word of God concerning Timothy. And before you all say, oh, well, Timothy was young, blah, 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 blah. You need to read it. Timothy was raised up by his mother and his grandmother. Okay? In the law. The testimony of the books of Moses. He was raised up from a childhood in it. It wasn't like he just came to understand. He knew the Word of God. He needed to be encouraged because there were men who were older than he were but he had equal knowledge and understanding to them. In that case, if you have studied that Word of God, and some have, there are some who have had, an, you know, I, I, Sister uh, Barbara had mentioned that she had studied, began studying or reading the Word of God from an early age. And I can believe that there are many who have. And I don't mean to tell you that, uh, that that's not possible. I've made mention to young evangelic ministers or children with dreams and visions. I, 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 I have warned you about these things. Okay? It's the difference between reading and studying, which she has said 
she began to do at a very early age, and the actual movement of the Holy Spirit upon her life to begin to teach or share in prophecy, in visions, in dreams. I can assure you that if you asked her that she would have her doubts regarding someone as a child being used of by God to fulfill those positions. And I, I have no question about it whatsoever. I am telling you flat out that God would not use children who have yet to even understand what sin is to begin to be using them to tell visions and revelations of God. Now you can go off and believe that hog worship if you want to. That's on you. I'm not receiving it. <coughs> Don't want to get off the track here. I was referring to babes in Christ. Now, here's what the Word says about babes in Christ. That I shall speak to these my people through the mouths of babes. And I've tried to share that with you about the innocence. The heart has been open. It only knows and understands like a child. Feed me, feed me. You know, like a little baby. But it's so genuine. So sincere. There's no guile in their desire. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be filled with God. In that period of time and in that state of being as a babe, God is able to speak through them. They don't hardly even know what it is that they're saying, but He'll give utterance through them. <coughs> he does that to check to see if we're listening. <laughs> And if we're being obedient, and I've shared this with you before, how many churches have you ever been that allowed a babe, allowed the Holy Spirit to give utterance through a babe, amen, Jesus, and people actually listen to hear God? It's almost unheard of today. We've got so... Uh, we could, they're scribes. They're, they're uh, Pharisees. They're uh, this religious... I don't know what in the world you would call it. It's just... It's, uh, it's, a, it's a religion. It's religious. It's, it's a practice. It's, it's, uh, there's no life in it. It's death. The living word is active. He comes from this way, and comes from that way, and come out of this person and that person. And that's why it's a many better body. The issue they were having, okay, was that there were so many different angles of which the Holy Spirit was given utterance that they had to teach the body how to keep it in control, under restraint. And that was not to quench the Spirit, but to give everyone an opportunity to be used by the Spirit of God to utter that utterance. And others might be able to hear what's being said. Because when you've got two or three people speaking in tongues, and you've got a couple, I've got a vision here, i got a dream here, I mean, all of this information is coming out all at once. Nobody's able to be edified by any of it. That's why they set the elders in the church. It was never never meant to quench the movement of the Holy Spirit, but only to give guidance to it. That everyone might be able to participate, and by, amen, Jesus, as everybody is not participating, and that's why I continue to encourage you, each one of you, amen, Jesus, Father, please, share what the Holy Spirit is giving you to share. If you studied the Word of God last night, amen, Jesus, and I don't believe in coincidences, this is by faith. 
and the next day you get on uh, on the video that I've shared on the channel, Amen Jesus. Well, Brother Andrew, the Lord was just sharing with that with me last week, or He was just sharing that with me yesterday. Share that. Share what the Father has been sharing with you. Even if it's something that ha entirely different than anything I've even mentioned. I don't care. I want to hear what God is saying through the Holy Spirit to you. These are the fragments that are being gathered together in the basket. And if we don't start let the fragments come forth, so we can start gathering them as a body, how are we going to get that basket filled up? Now that's one way of looking at it. There's different ways of understanding what's taking place. But I'm trying to bring you into a general concept, understanding of what the true foundation of our faith was about. And how the body actually functioned as many members. And I can assure you, what has been taken is advantage of the position of elder and of teachers and pastors. They have gone way beyond what it was that they were originally established to be. Uh, there's there's <laughs> conversation about where a pastor is at in the order of the church has always been a consistent thorn in the flesh of many, which they've gotten to the point that they ignore it and don't even pay attention to it. But if you'll look down in the order of prophet, teacher, healer, pastor, it's way down at the bottom of the list. Yet we promoted him right to the top of the list. It's out of order, folks. It's away from the established foundation of which the Father desires to draw us back onto that foundation. We're not going to get there by continuing in disobedience. So, the many-membered body, amen, Jesus, requires participation of everyone. Amen. And then we break that bread and the crumbs fall off the table or in the breaking of that bread more is revealed that's how the revelation works let me help you to understand that because I'm sure you don't understand another aspect of the body was one would have a revelation a light bulb moment <coughs> where the Holy Spirit will utilize what's being said at that moment with what that person had learned okay, in the study of the Word of God and add the third part of connecting something that the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance that connects itself to what's being spoken at that moment and comes into a greater understanding from the two. What is presently being spoken, what is being drawn from the past, okay, past, present, and future, okay, brings forth the greater. That is a revelation. Wow. <sighs> Well, that revelation starts a work. Because when that one stands up, and it says, who has a revelation? Stand up. Share that revelation. And when you've done share that revelation, sit back down. Because I guarantee you, by the grace of God, and the movement of the Holy Spirit, amen, Jesus, someone else is going to get a revelation. And they're going to stand up. And the Word says, okay, he with the greater revelation stand, or the... Okay, and the let you sit down. One starts it, he sits it, another another that adds on to that what was just shared is oh yeah, he met Jesus. 
and he stands up in chairs. And then another one, he sits down, and he stands up. And pretty soon, if you're all listening intently, which you should be, that's going to put a group of things together for you, for us. And we're going to have a hallelujah, amen, Jesus, thank you, Father moment that will shake that roof right off the foundation. <laughs> and you'll get up and start dancing and praising and giving glory to the Father like you ain't never done it before. Okay? Trust me. These, this is how the body was to work together. It's a many member. That's why the idea of, <laughs> the idea of, of sitting behind each other, looking at the back of each other's heads, it's so, it's in such contradiction and com confliction with the movement of the Holy Spirit that, that uh, Father, please help them to understand they need to tear the benches out of that joint and get themselves set up so they can face each other. If it's just tables that you're sitting around, and there's several tables, and I've shared this before, amen, Jesus, regarding where they were at at the time the gathering took place was in some sort of an end, in and Paul stood up on a little box and that's as far as a pulpit that he got or any of the brethren that we got I can assure you just to be just above the crowd so you can get the attention of those who are further out okay but not to bring yourself up in such glorification that you're way above everybody else looking down on them that was not the issue which is common now among the households of faith and that altar, which was not to be built by human hands, because we have a heavenly altar. That's the one we go to. We're not to go to the one built by hands. Those of you who are among the fellowships right now who are still making altar calls, oh, Father God, turn away from it. Turn away from any fellowship that has benches. <laughs> and you're still looking at back at that is not fellowship. That is not the gathering together of the body of Christ in the many members. That is not the op that is not how the Father would have us be with one another. We're to face one another. Sitting at tables, yes, that's fine and dandy. In groups, yes, that's great. But there should be a freedom and a casualness to it. And an earnest and genuine desire from the hearts of those who are there that the Holy Spirit move upon us and a respectfulness that we listen and hear and not make so much commotion by two or three that the rest of the body is being distracted from what's being said. Now it's my belief that a time would come when each of the members of the body of Christ would know the proper order and would do it automatically without having to have pastors and teachers and all kinds of people around you guiding you. Because it was to have matured our body, our collective body, as many members was to mature into the full stature of Christ. That's why there's an issue about the babes. If you're not matured in the full stature of Christ, if you have not come into the maturity, spiritual maturity, of the fullness of the stature of Christ, then you've got a problem, and you need to get submitted in obedience under a teacher who's helping to learn and understand what it is to come into the fullness of the stature of Christ. The babes are babes. Don't you sit there and tell others you just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit two or three months ago or six months ago or a year ago and start talking on this YouTube explaining things and talking about things you have not the foggiest idea about. You have not been raised up in nor understood 
because that is the single most disrespectful thing that you can do in relationship to the Word of God. We show honor and glory to the Father in obedience to submission, to listening, to learning. We don't show honor and glory to the Father or bring honor and glory to the Father when as babes we attempt to do what He would not have us do. Even the very nature of a child, a baby, tells you not to do that. You would not take a baby and expect him to drive a car. What the Father does not expect, nor does He desire, that a babe in Christ lead the body of Christ. It's a man-child relative to a childlike faith, which I don't care if you get to be 150 years old and study the Word of God for 149 and 9 tenths of the, other, of the years. In your heart, you will always come before the Father as a little child. If not, then you got a problem. And a little child shall lead them. And I've explained to you in the scriptures what that means. It's the man-child company. It's the ministry of the workmen of the eleventh hour who come at the very end of the day. Now we know we haven't entered into the seventh year because it's still a part of if you check the vineyard out, it's still a part of the working day. It's still a part of the same six days which we work because they're called workmen. Then you come right at the end. And that end time ministry of the man-child company and the workmen uh, the sons and daughters of God that come forth in the anointed word of God is that child ministry. It's also related to Solomon who was given permission, allowed to build the temple. So in a sense, the footmen shot it with the gospel of peace and the eleventh hour workmen and the man child are all a part of the picture of Solomon's ministry, which comes at the end. And that came when? After David, the suit of armor, spiritually speaking, of which we've been a part of in the in part ministry, which is coming to an end because the fullness is coming. The fullness of the revelation of the body of Christ of understanding, of being gathered back in too. So, without giving any thought to the time of the clock, I will pay attention to what I believe is the leading of the Holy Spirit and what I share, how much I share, when I share. I think I said what already. <laughs> But, and so, I, I believe at this hour, I've, I've mentioned enough, I, I think I've got it all out, what the Spirit wanted me to say. And uh, so, <laughs> the Lord be with you and blessing in Yeshua's name. Amen.